All right, hello, hello, friends, and welcome back to the Gaming Dad Fujo podcast. This is episode number 18 being recorded on March 6th, 2024. I am Fujosevich, your host, former professional Hearthstone player, currently working as an analytical chemist in the pharmaceutical industry. This is a place where we get to talk about all of the gaming things and sci-fi shows and everything else that we used to talk about when we would regularly stream and upload daily YouTube videos. And instead of interrupting myself with gameplay, now I'm going to interrupt myself with other topics. And on today's episode, we will be talking about, at the very least, Pokemon Day 2024, Love is Blind Season 6, Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix Live Action Edition, multi-million dollar hockey card collections let's get started he's got no time to play video games he's the gaming dad fujo nailed it all right we're gonna jump in with the first topic going to be pokemon uh pokemon day just came by here february 27th uh the biggest news there's a there's a you know nintendo direct pokemon direct these sorts of things they always they always love to do these on these big anniversary dates Biggest news, Pokemon Legends Z, or Z, depending how you want to pronounce it, the last letter of the al- English alphabet, uh, set to release early 2025. It's going to be kind of following the Legends gameplay, we're assuming, we're also assuming a lot more battling, but this is kind of completing the XY series. A lot of the Pokemon games, you know, there's red, blue, and then we got the the yellow later on. I know there was a leaf green as well, like it's complicated there, but X and Y was never finished with a, a, a Z or a Z. So this is actually interesting that it's finally getting completed. A lot of people really hype. Like I said, it's following the Legends uh, naming. We, we didn't see, we saw nearly nothing from the from the trailer. Just a lot of uh, kind of like outlines, outlines of what the game might look like. They, the Twitter account, Pokemon Twitter account has confirmed the entire game is going to be set within, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation because I've only ever read these things before, Lumio's City. Um... I'm, we're, and they said it's going to, you're going to find a way to where the city can inhabitat, habitate uh, humans and Pokemons beautifully. So we're assuming there's going to be some sort of building of the city, probably different biomes, things like that. Uh, this is kind of cool that they're doing the legends. People were kind of expecting uh, uh, Generation 5. They've jumped to Generation 6, which is X and Y, like I said. So that's, that's really, really cool. This is, you know, Pokemon uh, Z was canned 10 years ago. So it's, it's, it's definitely really hyped. Definitely people are, are like the Legend. I think the Legends formula is probably the best Pokemon that's come out for the Nintendo Switch so far. Um, the other interesting thing was that this was announced to release early 2025. There's been lots of rumors of a new Switch, a Switch 2, whatever you want to Switch expansion, whatever it's going to be. So it's going to be interesting to see if those two things kind of align. It's going to, This is going to be released on the Switch 2 and also on the Switch. We'll see how that works. And then as the trailer ends... We see the symbol for Mega Evolutions, which my Pokemon Go playing, let me tell you, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of Mega Evolutions there, but not too much in the mainline Pokemon games. So it's going to be, people are very excited to get uh, those back up and started. And now that we're on the Pokemon topic that I've brought up, let's jump in. What else has happened since the last time we spoke? The 10th anniversary of Twitch Plays Pokemon Red. Uh, just passed in these last couple weeks just happened there on uh, March 1st when the game was completed Um, first of all praise Helix second of all let me explain what this is all about so this Twitch plays is basically where a stream is set up and the game will take inputs from chat you can type for example whatever's going to be up or down or left or right A or B or start to control the Pokemon game Um, this was then set up with This, as you can imagine, had a lot of chaos. Then this was like the first big one where this happened. And in Pokemon's obviously a simple game. Even 10 years ago, everyone knew Pokemon Red and how it works and where you have to go and the order of the gyms, the caves, all this sort of stuff. So it's absolutely incredible. Um, It started, uh, I wrote these dates down, February 12th and did March 1st. Um, So that was 16 days consecutive nonstop playing. You could be watching and, and playing and go to sleep and wake up and see where everything was going the next day. This was just absolutely ridiculous things. There was a, a bloody Sunday where tons of the starter was transferred out of Bill's PC, destroyed a whole bunch of powerful Pokemon. Um, we were able to catch Zapdos. They used their Master Ball to catch Zapdos. People have joked that this is, you know, you know, our parents have watching the moon landing live and we got to see, you know, Twitch plays Pokemon. Like it was this massive, massive Twitch event. Guinness World Records has it as the largest 
what is it, the largest RPG or largest single pl- single player game having inputs from the most number of people. There's over a million unique views on it. It was averaging 80,000 concurrent viewers, especially towards the end. Uh, the, I already mentioned, you know, uh, the Praise Helix memes. That's been living for 10 years now. The super coolest thing uh, in, in the Elite Four, their Lance's Dragonite is level 62, normally an absolute tank. Of of a of a, of a, a Pokemon to take on level sixty two is pretty high. Dragonite's one of the strongest out there, and the absolute genius of the Pokemon uh, Twitch Plays group brought a level thirty six Venomoth. And you might think thinking, well, how did this possibly work out? Well, the the Gen one Pokemon AI is interesting, where it always picks a super effective move, and Lance's Dragonite has Barrier, and Barrier typing is effective against Venomoth, so. Dragonite just kept using Barrier, doing no damage, because this AI says, well, this is super effective, just keep using it, because the typing was, not what the actual effect of it was, just the typing was, and Venomoth, level 36, very slowly, uh, poison powdered and leech lifed Dragonite to death. It just absolutely, it, it it's one of these, like, gaming moments that kind of have to be there to really understand it, trying to go through the dark cave, puzzle solving, all this stuff. I mean, there was... There were people wanting chaos of like trying to send people the wrong way. The the the, the stream the stream owner had to like put this uh, democracy rules on where people would have to let a couple set you know a couple seconds in between every action people could vote. Okay, let's actually go up here. Um, like I said, there was you know the the bloody Sunday lost a whole bunch of Pokemon got transferred out of the out of the uh, out of Bill's PC. There lost a whole bunch of strong Pokemon. Uh, just an absolutely incredible, super super cool gaming thing that just had its 10 year anniversary so i know a lot of people myself included remember it and you're just like wow that was 10 years ago felt like and eh, this past summer but time is funny that way next topic baseball spring training everyone's feeling optimistic everyone's feeling good uh we know i'm a, a toronto sports fan i talk about toronto sports teams every once in a while i'm a big fan of the blue jays i'm i'm moderately optimistic about the Blue Jays I think they're gonna need some the pitching was fantastic last year you can't ask for our pitchers to really do much better than that so we're gonna need them to almost repeat uh, as a group to be one of the best groups again and then our offense has to step up but the one thing that uh that's really interesting right now is that the fact that the uh Major League Baseball pants are kind of see-through and feel free to pause this Hit up, hit up the old Google Images and take a look. Uh, Major League Baseball signed a deal with Fanatics to provide uniforms for the league. And it's supposed to be a little more breathable material, help the players not overheat, that sort of stuff. Um, it kind of looks like some of the players' lower bodies, especially on teams that have white jerseys, their lower bodies are being hidden by, hidden by uh, thin sheets of oily paper. Um, there are no shortage of pictures from spring training. You can see a lot, a lot of definition on some of those players' hamstrings. That's all I'm going to say. I know there's going to be a lot of people very excited with this. And uh, MLB, Fanatics, if you need a quality assurance manager, I'll take consulting fees uh, on the weekends, 100K per year. I can't do any worse than you just did right now. Let's be honest. Um, So, yeah, uh, cheers to baseball starting up. Cheers to the Jays having a great season and uh, everyone out there enjoy those uh, pants while you can because a lot of teams have already tried to find their old supplies that they haven't thrown out and gotten rid of. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. They're they're, they're not going to leave this. They're going to change that. It's kind of funny. We're going to jump into Love is Blind Season 6. I said this episode is being recorded March 6th. I haven't seen the last, uh, the finales. They're released right now. The second we're done, uh, we're going to go watch them right now. Uh, I was really wrong on a bunch of predictions uh, two weeks ago on our episode. So that was pretty excellent. Laura and Jeremy. Well, Laura can't get over Hawaiian shirts and Jeremy can't get over cheating on her. So that relationship's not going to work out. Um, So the interesting thing with this is, you know, Jeremy went to the bar. First of all, he left his person he's about to get married to at 11 p.m. to go to a bar where he stayed out until six. That's not cool. I don't think at least. Uh, it seemed like, and he's like, I turned on my GPS tracker. Well, people online, the internet sleuths that we're all big fans of, it seems like they were like, well, Jeremy has a GPS, uh, he has an Apple watch and probably turned the GPS on his phone, left the phone in the car, then went to go hook up at the house. 
and the GPS probably connected on his watch showing that he was traveling. Um, obviously, you know, sending the DM to Jeremy and being like, hey, uh, you know, hey, you want to like, if things don't work out, I'm here. I mean, there's a way, to, I think... <sighs> Like, I, I don't think you, you don't do that in this situation. Like this is if you, or if you're going to do it, uh, you know, you send a funny like DM with like ABBA singing, like, you know, if you change your mind, I'll be first in line, right? You don't just jump in there and then like, you're kind of aggressive and then you go jet skiing in this big group barbecue and there's like, let's go jet skiing. Um, yeah, it's just, um, it's, it's pretty interesting, but you know, when, uh, you know, when the pretty birds have flown, you know, then, then, then is your chance to get in. And we're going to jump to the next couple. And let me tell you, we're not talking about birds there. We are going to be talking about dolphins because Kenneth, Kenneth's relationship also collapsed because he loves dolphins and his phone and clearly doesn't love Brittany. Uh, I've never seen anyone go from so hot to so cold so quickly. I, I don't know what happened. Just cold shoulder every time the cameras were around in the pod. It seemed like he was very interested in Brittany. And then very quickly, we also learned he was very interested in pods of dolphins. I just, I, very strange. We'll see what happens on the reunion if he shows up at the reunion. Uh, a million memes about all of these things have been generated. So that's been wild. AD and Clay. Clay snapped at AD in front of Clay's mom when they were, you know, they meet the parents, they do this and that. Here's the thing. Clay snapped. I don't, I, I, I yeah. And then, then, AD, then Clay's mom is just like, oh, I'm going to have to sit this one out. I, 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 I just, I, I don't think, I don't think they're going to marry. I don't think AD is going to say yes. That, that's my prediction. We'll, we'll find out in, in a couple hours from now if, if we're able to watch it tonight or not. Uh, Jimmy and Chelsea, he is still trying to convince himself that he loves her. I'm assuming he's been told by the producers he's not allowed to leave. I definitely think he's going to say no at the altar. Um, his conversation with him and Jessica, I, I really didn't think she would be so into him. I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. It was like, I felt like they had a pretty respectful conversation until I, I swear I heard him say, you're still my number one. Not like in the pods, no dolphin jokes. You were my number one. It's like, you are my number one. That's what I thought I heard him say. So that's really strange. I think he's going to say no. Johnny and Amy. Johnny and Amy. They seem like the adults in the group, at the, at the group, at, in this whole, uh, this experiment. We'll call it experiment to give Nick Lachey a little respect for what he wants to be doing here. His science. Um... He, they, they are great at the barbecue. They're just barbecue and talking, giving everyone hugs. How's it going? Great to see you. How, how's everything? They just hung up on this one thing. Um, yeah, this one thing that, that they're not able to be physical until Amy's on the pill. Um, there's a certain cartoon joke where I'm just looking at Johnny and I'm saying, just buy condoms. Why isn't he buying condoms? Does he not know what condoms are? Um, I, I, it's, it's probably rare. Maybe it's rare in the Carolinas, but in every grocery store, dr super, you know, drugstore near where I live in Canada, condoms are everywhere. Condom commercials are everywhere. Buses, TV, radio, everything. They're everywhere. I don't know how he's never heard of them. Um, go buy some condoms. It seems like they really like each other. They're, he, they got along with the parents, all that stuff. I just, I, I really hope they can figure it out. It's, that's such, there, there's, th this is also a thing. I, I'm assuming there's something else that Johnny and Amy have talked about, about this off camera. And, and that's why on camera, I feel like it's kind of like a, I don't know. It's just like a weird conversation. I feel like they're, they're struggling to talk about it when they've probably said like, Hey, let's talk about this stuff off camera. Something is up. Some, something is up there. Something is, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think about. I, I think they'll, I think they'll get married. I think they'll both say yes. They'll figure it out. They'll, they'll have kids and live happily ever after. That's what I hope. That's what I honestly hope for both of them. I think they're both great. Let's switch topics. Avatar, the last airbender on Netflix. Okay. We're going to talk about this a few more times. We're going to talk about Avatar a bunch. Um, amazing. Or as you might say, Amaze Ang or Amaze Ong, depending, uh, <laughs> depending where you are. So first opening scene. 10 seconds, maybe five seconds in, I was hooked. I'm like, okay, they're going to do this well. The earthbenders running. Yeah, there's spoilers. Sorry, I'm going to spoil stuff that's been out for three weeks now. Uh, two weeks. I know, I know, I know. Two weeks, relax. Uh, the earthbenders running away from the firebenders. You know it's going to be a quality... I thought it was, we knew it would be a quality show. I, I looked right. I just said, this is going to be good. The, the issue is... The CGI sometimes does get a little wonky. We find, we're not done the first... We're not done the season. Um... We're not done the season, so we're at the we're at the Northern Water Tribe finally, um, but uh, it's just it's 
I don't know, something about the CGI, sometimes like the fire bending always looks great. Most of the earth bending looks solid. Sometimes it's a little off. The I feel like they've really struggled with the water bending. I think they need to hire a couple couple of Marvel people for seasons two and three. I think I think they definitely have to do well, seasons two, book two and three. I know the cartoon. I know, I know it was book one, two, and three. I get it. They, they should continue to, to emulate that. Even though there's been some changes from the cartoon, I get it. It's it's working for what it is. It's not just going to be shot for shot. But I mean, let's be honest, Kyoshi Island, Kyoshi Warriors, fantastic. The stuff with Aang and Gyatso, fantastic. Grand Grand doing the opening monologue to explain the Avatar, the Fire Nation, everything was it lived in harmony until the Fire Nation attacked. Oh, a fantastic. Uncle Iroh, shout out to Canadian Kim's Convenience star, Paul Sun Hyung Lee. Absolutely amazing. One like A lot of amazing characters in casting for this. The only 99.5% perfect Uncle Iroh. And Uncle Iroh is probably, is he the coolest character in Avatar? Probably, probably, right? You disagree with me in the comments, it's fine. I think he's he's one of the coolest. They did the Pai Show stuff. They did the, they already did it. They already mentioned the, well, they didn't say it, but they they showed a White Lotus piece in the market that he picked up. Um, if they just let Uncle Iroh speak a tiny bit slower, I don't know if that's the, the, the actor or the producers or the directors, what's happening? They just let Uncle Iroh speak a tiny half a beat slower. Perfect, 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 perfect. Um, I definitely, so like we said, the, the CGI needs to improve a little. The water bending fight in the Northern Water Tribe was like, ooh, that's a little rough. Um, uh, the Kung Fu, all everyone's Kung Fu is pretty good. Like you can definitely tell there was the, the fight in the... Uh, uh, Omashu. Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Omashu. Wait, wait. I almost missed this. The The fight in Omashu market was definitely very like, wait, is, is this a Jackie Chan fight scene? It was so cool the way they're going. Bam, bam, bam. They're twisting. They're, they're knocking over stalls. Fantastic. Omashu. Fant I, I was, I was scared about Omashu. The only thing I didn't love about Omashu, first of all, it was hard to watch Abed and not just giggle, but he's, he's a great actor and I got over it. It's fine. Um, but it was still kind of Abed and in Avatar but that's fine it's fine it's fine he's great and I got over it it's a me thing not an Abed thing um Omashu when King Bumi and Aang spoilers finally fight in the cartoon I remember Aang really getting beaten really really getting beaten up badly there because in it kind of makes sense that there's this young kid young airbender who beats up all these like trained military firebenders and waterbenders and earthbenders and all this stuff because no one's seen an airbender for a hundred years except boomy has and remembers how to deal with them and he really in my mind at least i have to rewatch it but cartoon boomy really whoops cartoon ang and this kind of seemed like ang was kind of doing well and then they have the whole moral thing and the fight ends and their buddies and all that stuff. And that's fine. But that was my only thing. I really wanted to see Aang really get beaten there because it shows like, yeah, Boomy remembers how the airbenders worked and how to beat them, which I thought was a kind of really cool, clever thing that they did in the cartoon. Um, I think this, the, we talked about, did we mention the Kung Fu? Everyone's Kung Fu is great. Zuko's is by far the best for all of the younger actors. Um... Uh, Katara actually, I thought was a little bit weaker earlier. Maybe this is fantastic because I feel like in the North, in the Northern Water Tribe, her Kung Fu actually looked a little stronger. Her stances looked a little like deeper and she was really like popping into him. So that was really cool. So I'm really happy to see that. So maybe it's just like, it's the character developing and then the actress is able to emulate that. And if that's the case, fantastic, fantastic. Um, last point Om about Omashu at the gates. They, see, they show up to Omashu and then they see someone carrying a big crate of vegetables and the earthbenders say, get out of here. And they knock them off. And then the, the actor says, oh no, my, and then the scene cuts. And then a second time in the market, they're running and a, and a cart filled with cabbages gets knocked over. And they goes, he goes, oh no, what are you doing? Not my, and then the scene cuts. And then finally, the third time we get an actual, my cabbages done by the voice actor for my cabbages. Jamie C, I'm hoping I'm pronoun pronouncing that right. I apologize if I'm not. It was the voice actor from the cartoon who played the real life action of himself. And there's a whole bunch more of these th cases where these people have been tapped to do the live action versions of themselves in this. And we're going to talk more about it next episode. That's all I'm going to say about it. Fantastic so far. I'm super on board. I and the last, this will be the last point. They need to film seasons two and three right away so that the kids, the child actors don't grow up too much because Aang being small and a cute little kid needs to remain that way. If, if he hits puberty and grows super tall, it's just going to, it'll still be, it'll still work. They'll still make it great. I'm just saying 
everyone's really good the way they are, let's keep it if if possible. If, if possible, let's just you know, it's hard with with child actors. That's always a it's always a thing whenever there's shows like that that use use child actors. It's always a potential thing. Let's jump into a wrestling. Okay, we we seem to always have a wrestling segment, right? Uh, WWE and uh, Cody WrestleMania update. It seems like that's kind of a <laughs> kind of a regular thing that's been happening. Uh, we had elimination chamber in Australia, uh, so that was good. Um, that was fun. AJ flew just to mess mess uh, screw over uh, LA Knight to not win uh, elimination chamber. That was great. Okay, what what's happening here? The Rock on March first, also March first. Shout out to March first, Mario Day, M A R. I O Mario Day Sweet. Uh, this was fantastic. He posted a 15-minute promo from like his backyard, trash talking Cody and Seth Rollins. He then deleted it a little while later and re-uploaded the same video, but it had an extra six minutes. So it became a 21-minute promo from his house, just trash talking them. It's fantastic that Rock is leaning into heel rock so so hard. It's fantastic. There's so many people that are just, you know, are are all we're all they're all competing for hater of the year. Uh, what's the joke that, yeah, that uh, Rock uh, released the director's cut, the hater edition? Just fantastic. I mean, it's just so, so good. We're, we don't even have to mention, uh, you know, Christian Cage, all the great work he's doing for being hater of the year. Um, but what's what's it? Uh, so what's happening? Oh, this is this is the setup now. for We finally have the setup for WrestleMania, right? The next night. So that was March 1st, March 2nd. Rock challenges Cody at WrestleMania. So it's going to be Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth night one. No interference. So it, so that's going to be night one. If Cody and Seth win, there's no interference night two. However, if Rock and Roman, then it's going to be bloodline rules, which is going to be anything goes, no disqualification. So obviously it's going to be bloodline rules and we're going to have a million run-ins. This is going to basically be Infinity War where everyone's running towards the Th- Thanos' invasion. It's just, it's going to be nonsense and I'm actually very excited for it because that's it's just going to make it a lot of fun for WrestleMania. But something even more important than WrestleMania in wrestling has already happened. The living legend Sting wrestled his final match. Uh, super, super cool. AEW gave him a fantastic send-off. Um, as his music hit, his sons came out dressed as past Stings. They had Surfer Sting. They had red and black face paint Sting. Um, it was just super, super cool. You think like, oh my goodness, did he dress up as Surfer Sting? Nope, it's actually his kid. Um, As a side note for one of his kids, uh, one of his sons actually uploads Destiny gameplay on YouTube as YouTube uh, channel Kothas. Um, He posted an update saying, hey, just to let you all know why I haven't been uh, posting in a little while. I've been really hard working at work, training in the gym so I can, you know, look and like move and uh, as well as I can for my dad's final match. He's he's Sting. Um, So that's really cool that he didn't just like try and ride his dad's coattails to you know, get a bunch of like views. You're just like, Hey, I like to do this YouTube thing. I, I have a similar feeling towards this silly hobby of, of mine. Right. I just like to do it for the fun of it. Right. Um, it's super cool to get his, you know, his kids involved. I mean, they, they actually look pretty good. They move pretty well. Uh, Sting is retired undefeated in AEW and he never buried anyone. Everyone who got to work with Sting looked better, whether they, they, well, whether they won or lost, everyone lost who fought, who fought against Sting. Um, also cool that Darby never uh, turned on Sting. Sting's whole thing is his character's always getting backstabbed and betrayed. It's like, a, it, it's been memed. It's just a meme. It's like, you're just staying there. You're going to get betrayed. Um, they did their own variation of the Shawn Michaels super kick to Ric Flair, where, you know, uh, Shawn Michaels said, I'm sorry, I love you. And then he super kicks Ric Flair and beats him. Except the Buck said, we're not sorry, we hate you. And then double super kicked Sting, who then no-selled it, no-sold it, beat his chest, and then went for the double clothesline. <laughs> just classic, classic Sting. I love, it's just fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, if uh, this, this is just someone who completely deserved to go out on an all-time high. Apparently, there was a story that, where Sting wanted to lose. He didn't want to go out on this, you know, on this thing. But honestly, it's fantastic. He finally, you know, he's someone who's always put the company and other people's interests before his own. Go out undefeated. He got, they, they won the tag titles. The, the Young Bucks had the tag titles. Amazing match. Five-star career. It's, there's, what more can you say? I mean, I hope he enjoys retirement, spends time with his family, and uh, has a long, long, happy life. After, uh, after and outside of wrestling. Um, Oh, here we go. There's always a little bit of business news, right? PlayStation laid off 900 employees. That's about eight to somewhere between eight and 11% of their global workforce. That's a big number and very bad. Um, 
Oh, let's see. They closed their entire London branch. That's awful. The layoffs included pe- uh, people at Naughty Dog, Gorilla, and Insomniac. Um, there was a... <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Of course. PlayStation, ev- everyone's trying to push these live service, multiplayer live service games. Nobody wants this. People just want high quality games. Uh, you need to stop doing that. Um, uh, Naughty Dog had really been fumbled. I think it's four years into the PS5 and no announcement of a new game. This is, it's bad news for the gaming industry. Uh, Microsoft Activision had massive layoffs earlier. So it's just, it's, it's, it stinks because it's, it seems like these are short-sighted moves. These, these companies must've been doing something, developing something. And the issue is again, again, like a lot of these uh, economic and business cases, the people who are making decisions, real leadership, the executive level are not the ones suffering and losing their jobs. And even if they are, they're getting massive golden parachutes. It's people who go to work and try and do something useful to add value to that company. Um, and they're not the, and, and the, the regular workers like us are the ones suffering. So it really, really stinks. Uh, PlayStation's in a, in a funny, I think in a funny place, I think they're going to do fine, but they, they, the majority of what they're doing is remakes and remasters. There's not a lot of exclusives. It's this, you know, it's how many special edition master deluxe anniversary versions of Skyrim do we need? Right? Like it's, we get it. Skyrim is incredible and wants to be played everywhere. But right now, hardcore gamers are going to PC. Casuals have mobile and switch. PlayStation's kind of stuck in the middle. There's no excellent exclusive drawing. I think they're going to be fine. I think they'll be fine. They were worse off at the PS3 launch and they survived. I, I hope they do well because gaming is better when ev- everyone, the three big companies and PC, so four, are all doing well. I hope they do well. Um, I think they're just, they got to figure it out uh, sooner than later because they need some games to really keep, get uh, people a little more into the, into what they're doing. Oh, this is an interesting story. This is actually a really, really cool sports, sports story. Anthony Kim, he is a professional golf play, golf player. Um, he hasn't played pro golf in 12 years. He was an absolute phenom when he was 22 years old. He was one of these up and comers. You think about the, those years. This is the Tiger Woods years. And it's like, this is this young, this young guy is going to be fantastic. Um, and he just played and signed with the Live Tour. Uh, we know how we feel about uh, the Saudi investment fund buying up lots of sports and a lot of everything and we can like it or not like it or be indifferent as much as we want, but it's definitely going to be the new norm. They also just signed a big deal with tennis. So whatever your beloved sport is, they're coming for it. Get ready. Um, so the rumor is with Kim, when he left the PGA, there was some sort of medical insurance payout that he had, he had taken some insurance policy on himself because he was so good and expected to make so much money, took out medical insurance. And there was some clause that he would be able to keep this money as long as he never played pro golf again. So he disappears. But he became a ghost. This is even in today's social media online, everyone's online, everyone has a camera world. No one had seen this guy. He just disappeared. There, was, there, were, little, there would be rumors of, oh, someone would see him in a driving range in Dallas. And then eight months later, uh, somewhere in the Carolinas. Until recently, he signed with Live Golf. And so everyone's assuming the Live Golf paycheck, which is usually guaranteed money for big names, is going to offset whatever money he now has to pay back to an insurance company because he's playing professional golf again. Um, and in his first Live tournament back, this absolute child FEMA, child, 22, yeah, child, please, um, young phenom, uh, comes in dead last in a live tournament uh, by 11 strokes. Um, now, let's be honest. He's better at golf than I would be if I dedicate the next 10 years of my life to golf. Um, I know that. But on the live tour, which is the lower tier tournament, let's be honest, he came in last. So the mystique of this 12-year absence, basically disappearance, ghosting, is been answered. And I mean, again, it's 12 years later, so it's not what could have been, because again, it's not getting Anthony Kim in his mid-20s, where he would have been at his absolute golf peak. It's just a really interesting kind of sports, but also kind of non-sports, because it's just, you know, when someone's that ultra, in order to be that ultra competitive at anything, you have to be wired a certain way and to be willing to walk away and then disappear is so, so interesting. Um, And we got this, you know, we kind of closed this chapter on this Anthony Kim mystery um, around it. So uh, I just thought that was a really, really interesting story to disappear for that long. 
out of the public eye when you were massively in the public eye all right final story we mentioned this off the top there was a case containing boxes of hockey cards found in a regina canada basement that was put up for auction and received a closing bid over 3.72 million US dollars. Now, this is not just like go to your Toys R Us or your, uh, your, your, your Walmart and pick up some hockey cards and you're making millions. No, no, no. This is a pack containing 16 boxes of 1979 OPG hockey cards. Okay, these 16 boxes rose in value so much because when people do the math of how many individual packs are in each of these boxes, there's a strong statistical probability that there are as many as 20 mint pristine condition Wayne Gretzky rookie cards from the 1978-1979 season. Now that is when Wayne Gretzky was a rookie for the Edmonton Oilers who were at the time were in the World Hockey Association, the WHA. That's before they joined the NHL. So Wayne Gretzky's uh, WHA rookie card is super rare, super expensive. And there's potentially statistically about 20 of them in these packs of cards so they're going to be divvied up and there's going to be a lot of other old classic cards in there as well is this is just a super this is a super cool thing about collectible stuff i i love my collectible stuff i have my final fantasy 3 snes uh poster from the packaging i have it uh i have it uh, in a frame right here i've got uh, a bunch of my other nes and snes posters uh, framed, uh, the Final Fantasy three is the only one I can see right now. Uh, as, as I look around the room, I mean, I've mentioned a couple of the, a couple of the DVDs and, uh, classic things that I have behind me in the past. Um, I, I love this stuff. I love these collectibles. I have a bunch of my old NES and SNES boxes as well. One day, one day I hope to have a big enough space where I can put it on display somewhere. For now, it's just, you know, being contained in these plastic containers being stored and one day we'll uh, hopefully put them out somewhere and we've talked about this before i know we've talked about this on the str on stream a lot i don't know if i've talked about it here we've talked about it on the stream a lot i'm still looking for the one of the uh, original uh vanilla wow server blades they were auctioned off originally i've talked to, i know i've talked about this before on the stream uh, i was on the oldham server with a couple of my uh closest friends um and I think our server, our service, Oldham was not big back in the day compared to like uh, Tychondrius or something like that. But Oldham, I think, went for anywhere. There, there's four blades per server. And uh, they went for ranging from four to 800 US. And at the time, I'm like, oh, that's way too much. And now you just, again, they've just disappeared because, you know, someone gets them and they're like, oh, I just keep them. And then like years later, someone's like eBay, 20,000 20, US. And that's never going to happen. But I'll keep an eye out. If a U, if a if a US again, it has to be US server, uh, classic WoW Uldum server blade ever goes up, I got a I got a couple of Google alerts set for that one. Let me tell you. Okay, and that's gonna be it for this episode. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, what, what's gonna be happening between now and the next time we talk? Bad Batch. I didn't get into it. I didn't have my excuse to talk about Star Wars. Um, Avatar Season 1 will get finished, Love is Blind, we'll have the reunion, we'll talk about all that stuff. There's going to be a million new gaming stories that I, I won't be able to talk about, and we'll talk about the coolest ones. Um, I hope you're all doing great out there. Uh, let me know uh, how you're all doing in the comments. Like and subscribe, uh, rate it, uh, leave a comment, and we will be back in two weeks from now, as we always are. Uh, be good to each other, stay safe out there, and we will talk to you sometime very, very soon. Bye-bye.